ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد So today we move on in the explanation of Kitab Al-Tawheed شرح الموجز الممحد لتوهيد الخالق الممجد of the Shaykh Ahmed bin Yahya al-Najmi rahimahullah ta'ala and the original work of course Kitab al-Tawheed because this is the explanation of it as he mentions the Tawheed al-Khaliq al-Mumajjad al-Ladhi al-Lafahu Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad meaning Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab rahimahullah who is the original author of this tremendous work in explanation of the greatest of all of the fundamentals of Islam and that is the worship of Allah, i.e. At-Tawheed. Chapter 31 is where, we've, uh, where we're going to continue today. Bab, Qawli Allahi Ta'ala, Wa minan nasi man yattakhidu min duni Allahi andadan yuhibbunahum kahubbillah. The statement of Allah the Most High wherein he said, and from the people they are those who have taken besides Allah rivals, Loving them as they love Allah. Or loving them as the love for Allah. <coughs> then he said, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah, the statement of Allah, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَأَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْدَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرُسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّسُوا هَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ The ayah from Surah Al-Tawbah, ayah number 24, we're in Allah has said the meaning of which is say to them O Prophet if it is that your fathers and your sons and your brothers and your wives and your tribesmen and the wealth that you have gathered and gained and your trade and commerce in which you fear a decline and the dwellings in which, you, in which you delight are more beloved to you than Allah and his messenger and fighting in the path of Allah then wait until Allah brings about his decision and Allah does not guide a wrongdoing people then he mentions the hadith and anasin أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال narrated Anas ibn Malik رضي الله عنه that Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said لا يؤمن أهدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين أخرجاه he mentioned Allah's messenger said <coughs> that none of you will truly believe until I am more beloved to them or more beloved to him than his son and his father and all of mankind reported by Bukhari and Muslim and he mentions from the both of them meaning Bukhari and Muslim Anhu meaning from Anas ibn Malik who said that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Thalathun 
من كن فيه وجد بهن حلاوة الإيمان that they are three qualities, that whomsoever possesses them has tasted the sweetness of Iman. The one to whom Allah and His Messenger are more beloved than anyone besides them. أن يحب المرأة لا يحبه إلا لله and that he loves a person not loving him except for the sake of Allah وأن يكرهه وأن يكرهه أن يعود في الكفر بعد إن أنقذه الله منه كما يكره أن يقذف في النار and that he hates to return back to disbelief after Allah had saved him from that just as he hates to be thrown into the fire. Reported by Bukhari and Muslim. And it occurs in a narration at the beginning of which is لا يجد أحد حلاوة الإيمان حتى that there is not anyone who has truly tasted the sweetness of Iman up until and then he mentions the rest of it i.e. those three uh, traits that we have mentioned up until the end of the hadith. And then it is reported from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma who said Man ahabba fillahi wa abghada fillahi wa wala fillahi wa aada fillahi fa innama tunalu that whomsoever loves for the sake of Allah and he hates for the sake of Allah and that he befriends or makes allegiance for the sake of Allah and he makes enmity for the sake of Allah then Allah's friendship is attained by that and then he said <coughs> And a servant will not experience, experience the taste of Iman, will not taste, will not experience the taste of Iman, even if his prayer is plentiful and his fasting is plentiful, up until he becomes like that, meaning that he loves for Allah, hates for Allah, befriends for Allah, and makes enmity for Allah. And then he said, Ibn Abbas, وَقَدْ صَارَتْ آمَةُ مُؤَاخَاتِ النَّاسِ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِ الدُّنْيَا And most of the relationships have become based upon worldly affairs. And that will not attain for its people anything of goodness. وَلَا ذَلِكَ وَوَذَلِكَ لَا يُجْدِي عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ شَيْئًا And that will not attain for its, for its people anything, meaning of benefit, reported by Ibn Jarir. Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi mentioned in the footnote, I did not find this, uh, I did not find from the statement of Ibn Abbas, this statement reported by Ibn Jarir. However, I found it with Ibn al-Mubarak in his book, Az-Zuhd, page 160 and 161, and hadith number 353. Then he said, Ibn Abbas said regarding the statement of Allah, إِذْ تَبَرَّ أَلَّذِينَ اتُّبِعُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا وَرَأَوُ الْعَذَابِ وَتَقَتَّعَتْ بِهِمُ الْأَسْبَابِ قال المودة. The Ibn Abbas he said regarding the statement of Allah, when those who were followed disown those who followed them, and they see the torment, then all of their relations relationships will be cut off between them. Ibn Abbas he said, 
meaning the love will be cut off meaning al muadda meaning the love i.e. the love will be cut off between them then the explanation Sheikh Ahmed bin Yahya al Najmi the great scholar the Allama the Faqih the Mufti of Samita and Jazan Allah yarhamhu he said that Abdul Rahman bin Nasir al Sa'di rahimahullah and he was from the great scholars and from the teachers of Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih al Uthaymin that he said in his notes upon this chapter he said that the root of Tawheed and its spirit and its soul is to have sincere love for Allah alone. And that is the origin of the deification and the worship of Him. Rather, it is the absolute reality of Ibadah. And the Tawheed of a person cannot be complete up until the perfection of the love the slave has for his Lord is attained. And the love of Allah takes precedence over all other things that are loved, over all other loves. And the love of Allah overtakes them and overcomes all of the other types of love. So he makes this love for Allah the judge over all other types of love or loved ones. Such that those other loved things follow on from the love of Allah. And the love of Allah has in it happiness for the servant and joy. And whoever makes this distinction and perfects his love for Allah's sake, so their servant, thereafter he loves what Allah loves of actions and people. And he hates that which Allah hates of certain types of people and deeds. And he befriends the friends of Allah. And he makes enemy with his enemies. And with that he perfects. Or the iman of the servant is perfected. And likewise his tawheed. End of the words of Imam Sa'di rahimahullah. Sheikh Ahmed bin Yahya al Najmi he said. That this speech meaning of Imam Sa'di. Is priceless. And were it to be written in golden ink, then even that would be a small matter. For Allah is the one who brought into existence the servant. And he is the one who raised him and nurtured him by way of his bounties and his blessings. And he is the one who provided for him and, and, and gave him sustenance so that he may live upon that of food and drink. And he caused this sustenance to be absorbed into his body so that he can be nourished with it. And he both bestowed by way of it strength so as to worship him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He bestowed the taste to the food. And he gave the water its taste. So that it is acceptable to be drunk. So he benefited by way of it. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave benefit by way of it. And he is the one who made for the human a tongue and saliva and teeth and molar teeth so that he may be able to grind his food 
so that he may eat it. So that he benefits his body by way of it. And for this reason, we have the hadith of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherein he said, Love Allah for what he nourishes with you of his blessings. And love me due to the love of Allah. And love my household due to love of me. The hadith reported by Imam Al-Tirmidhi, Shaykh Al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, declared it to be da'if in Al-Mishkat. Added to this, Shaykh Ahmed, he continued, rahimahullah, added to this is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for his worship. And then he taught us that worship with that which he revealed in his book. And that which he clarified, or that which was clarified by Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the qualities and characteristics of this worship in his sunnah by way of his sayings and his actions. And Allah informed us of the good and the path of goodness that will lead us to Jannah. And he informed us of the path of evil that leads to the hellfire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in his book, after warning regarding marrying and making marriage between the believers and the idol worshippers, he said, Ula'ika yad'una ila nar. They are the ones, the idol worshippers, who invite to the hellfire. Wallahu yad'u ila jannati wa maghfirati bi'idhnihi. And Allah is the one who calls to paradise and to forgiveness by his permission. وَيُبَيِّنُ آيَاتِهِ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ And Allah makes clear his signs for the people so perchance they may take and they may remember, take admonition and remember. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 221. Sheikh Ahmed continued so that each one of us are reminded that were it not for the grace of Allah and His bounty upon a person guiding him to Iman and, him cre and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating him in a, into a Muslim society otherwise he may have been from those who was deserving of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning that it is from the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he placed us into a Muslim society a Muslim community otherwise had he not then that individual may have been deserving of his punishment had, he, had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, uh, had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not guided him to iman for this reason it is obligatory upon us to love Allah azza wa jalla because he created us and he provided for us and he guided us and he guided our hearts and he taught us that which we did not know and from the signs of the love that a servant has for his Lord is that he loves that which Allah loves of deeds. And he loves whom Allah loves amongst the people. And he hates 
that which Allah hates of deeds. And he hates whomsoever Allah hates of people. And it occurs in a hadith of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reported in the Mustadrak of Al-Hakim from the hadith of Mu'adh bin Jabal and he was authenticated by Shaykh Al-Albani in Al-Mishkat the dua, O oh Allah, I ask for your love and love of whom, whomsoever you love and love of every deed that takes me to your love. So he says, from, and from here also, there is explained the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ And as for those who believe, then they are stronger in love for Allah. They are stronger in love for Allah. Of course, following on from the ayah in the Bab. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادَ يُحِبُّونَهُمْ that from the people they are those who have taken besides Allah rivals and they love them like unto love for Allah. But as for those who believe, then their love for Allah is even stronger. And it is also made clear that the one who loves na'am the, the one who loves other than Allah from the idols and other gods besides him that they worship that do not create and those gods that do not sustain and they do not give life and they do not give death such a person will not enter into Jannah or rather that they do not give life and they do not give death, and they will not enter you into Jannah, and they do not save from the hellfire. And the one who loves these gods and these rivals unto Allah, that do not do anything from that which Allah does, and they are not to be described with anything that Allah is, to, that Allah is described with, then he has placed love, the one who loves these things, these idols and these gods besides Allah and these rivals that they have set up besides Allah, then he has placed love where it does not belong. And he is blameworthy in the sight of Allah as has been stated upon the tongues of his messengers and in his book. And he is deserving if he was to place that love where it does not belong. He is deserving of blame and of disgust. For this reason, the one who worships these other gods and they love them like the love for Allah and they have allegiance for them and they have enmity due to them and they fight due to them on that basis because of their love of these idols and these gods besides Allah that they will wage wars against others then there will come upon them a day when they will despise themselves meaning Yawm al Qiyamah and it is obligatory upon every Muslim to be sincere in his deeds. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in accordance, or rather, it is upon every Muslim to be sincere in his deed for Allah, having love for him, glorifying him and magnifying him. And it is obligatory upon every Muslim 
to befriend the friends of Allah. And the friends of Allah, they are the people who are obedient to him. And they are those who follow his sharia. And that they are to hate the enemies of Allah. Those who are in opposition to this. Meaning to this pure and sincere love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obedience to him and following his sharia and so on. And these verses, and these verses that they clarified for us that it is not permissible for a servant to give precedence to his father or to his children or to his brothers or to his kindred folk, his tribesmen, nor to his wealth that he has accumulated and gained, nor to the dwellings and the properties that he has gathered. He is not, and nothing that he has is to be put ahead of Allah's love from these affairs. Just as Allah has said, and he mentions the ayah from the chapter, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ till the end وَعِشِيرَتُكُمْ till the end of the ayah meaning say to them O Prophet if it is the case that your fathers your children your brothers your wives your tribesmen the wealth that you have gained, the trade in which you fear loss, the dwellings in which you take delight, are more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger. And striving in His cause, فَتَرَبَّسُوا Then wait. Wait. Up until Allah brings about His decision. Sheikh Ahmed, he said in explanation, he said, so if your father was to call you to the, to the disbelief of Allah, to disbelieve in Allah, or to associate partners with Allah in worship, or your son was to do that, or your brother was to do that, or your wife was to do that, or your tribesmen were to do that, then it is not permitted for you to obey them in disobedience to Allah. Because there is, no dis there is no obedience to the creation in disobedience to Allah, the mighty and majestic. And this type of disobedience to the creator occurs mostly amongst those people who reside in the lands of kufr. And likewise, amongst some of those who reside in the lands that are considered to be upon Islam. That a father may invite his son to disbelief or sin. That he may say to him, if you do not do such and such, then you are no longer my son. And he may even throw him out of the house. And Sheikh Ahmed said, and this is something, regarding which has been presented to me in question specifically regarding this affair, meaning that he's aware of these types of situations. And he mentions the narration of Anas ibn Malik, that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين that none of you truly believes up until I am more beloved to him than his son and his father and the whole of mankind. Meaning, in explanation, meaning that one's iman is not complete. A servant's iman is not complete and perfect except with this. 
by giving precedence to the love of Allah's Messenger وسلم, over and above the love of all of the people. And obedience to Allah and His Messenger over obedience to all people. Likewise, the hadith of Anas radiallahu anhu. Thalathun man kunna fihi wajada bihinna halawat al iman. That they are three. That they are three who have tasted. If they, if, uh, they, they are three who have characteristics that if they possess them, there are three qualities, whoever possesses them has truly tasted the sweetness of Iman. The first of them, the one to whom Allah and His Messenger are more beloved than anyone other than anyone other besides them or anyone other than them. And that a person loves another person not for any other reason except for Allah, except for Allah's sake. And that a person hates to be returned back, hates to return back to disbelief after Allah had saved him from it, just as he hates to be flung into the hellfire. Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi said, What an amazing, tremendous hadith! They are not three characteristics that are mightier than these. And a servant does not reach them, these three characteristics, except by the help and the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A servant, indeed a servant, in this dunya, in this world, is exposed to all types of call to, calls to wickedness, and evil and to oppose that which Allah has commanded and that which the messenger has commanded acts that turn him away from the love of Allah and the love of his messenger that call a servant to put the love of his kith and his kin his kindred folk, his family, his tribe and his relatives before the love of Allah to put that first, or the love of the ruler, or the love of society, or the love of his wife, the love of his children, over and above the love for Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So a believer must hold fast to the love of Allah and the love of the Rasul. He would sacrifice anything for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If that love calls him to oppose the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, the love of Allah calls a servant to love Allah and to love for his sake and to love whomsoever Allah loves and whomsoever the messenger loved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to hate whomsoever Allah hates, and whomsoever the messenger hates. And that he hates to return back to disbelief after Allah had saved him from that, just as he hates to be thrown into the hellfire. And that is because kufr, necessitates being cast into hell to remain therein forever, eternally. And he mentions the statement of Allah, لو يعلم الذين كفروا هنا لا يكفون عن وجوههم النار وجوههم النار ولا عن ظهورهم ولا هم ينصرون If only those who disbelieved knew the time when they will not be able to ward off the fire from their faces nor from their backs and they will not be helped. 
And Allah mentions, بَلْ تَعْتِيهِمْ بَغْتَةً Nay, rather the fire will come upon them all of a sudden. فَتَبْهَتُهُمْ فَلَا يَسْتَتِعُونَ رَدَّهَا وَلَا هُمْ يُنْذَرُونَ and they will have no power to avert it. Rather, Allah said, the fire will come upon them all of a sudden and it will perplex them. And they will have no power to avert it, nor will they get any respite. Surah Al-Anbiya 39 and 40. He says, وَأَخِيرًا And finally, في حديث ابن Abbas, from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, that whomsoever loves for Allah's sake and he hates for Allah's sake and he befriends and makes allegiance for Allah's sake and enmity for Allah's sake or disavowment for Allah's sake, then Allah's friendship is attained by that up until the end of that narration. He mentions that a characteristic of the believer is that he loves for Allah's sake and he hates for Allah's sake and he befriends for Allah's sake and he disavows or makes enmity for Allah's sake and that the friendship of Allah is not attained except by these levels that we have mentioned. And that is even if a person has plentiful prayer and plentiful fasting, then he can still, he can still not be described with these characteristics, meaning that he has attained the love of Allah. And he will not reach the true Iman or its perfection. And he will not attain that true Iman except with these characteristics. Loving for Allah, hating for Allah, befriending for Allah, making enmity for Allah. These characteristics. He said then, Ibn Abbas, he informed us, and now most of the relationships amongst the people are based upon worldly affairs that will not attain for its people anything, meaning that it will not benefit them, their friendships in this world, that due to the basis of their friendships, that they are worldly friendships based upon the dunya, it will not benefit them Yawm Al-Qiyamah. For this reason, Abdullah ibn Abbas he said regarding the statement of Allah, وَتَقَطَّعَتْ بِهِمُ الْأَسْبَابِ Then all of their relationships will be cut off between them. Mean, and he said, المودة, The love. Meaning that the love will be cut off. That they used to have between them in the dunya. That they loved each other for the affairs of the dunya and in gaining that dunya. And due to that which they wish to gain from each other, from mutual worldly benefits, that's all that their relationships were based upon. However, these affairs and this world, it will pass away on Yawm al Qiyamah. It will pass away. And they will not remain except that which was done for Allah. And that which was done for his sake, in his path. So then he said, I ask Allah to make us from those, O oh Allah, I ask you to make us from those who love you. And that we, naam, and that we hate for your sake, we love for your sake, and that we hate for your sake, that we, Make friendship with those people who are obedient to you. And we disavow ourselves from those who are 
disobedient to you. And upon that he finishes this chapter showing that relationships in the dunya are based upon tribes, race, color, caste, lineage, money, status, academia. Relationships based upon this do not benefit. Relationships based upon love for Allah. Following the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Obedience to the both of them. Obedience to Allah and his messenger. Worshipping Allah alone. Perfecting the noble character. Perfecting the noble manners. Behaving as he behaved. Not bringing counter arguments. Such as you find some of the people saying. Well that's not from my custom. But it's from the custom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you with the heritage of Islam. The Prophet sallallahu said, I was not sent except to perfect the noble character. The character, barakallahu feekum, my brothers and sisters, is based upon following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa being humble like he was humble, being shy like he was shy, being brave like he was brave, being generous like he was generous, being a husband like he was a husband, being a father like he was a father, being a leader like he was a leader, being responsible like he was responsible, not hating except for the sake of Allah, not competing upon jealousy and enmity and envy. Our relationship, my brothers and sisters, between each other is for Allah's sake. Our love for each other is for Allah's sake. وَكُونُوا إِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانَ As Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, and be with each other as brothers one to another. Why? Because our Lord is one. Our deen is one. Our prophet is one. And our example is one. Anything else, barakallahu feekum, we are not interested in. Love on the basis of anything else we are not interested in. Love that follows on from that is possible. You may love your mother. Rather it is mashru, legislated, rather required. You love your mother, you love your father, you love your relative, even if they be kuffar. With the natural love, the muhabba, which is natural, or the love that is natural, that Allah instills inside of a person. Like the Muslim man who would marry a Christian woman, he would love her. That is not love for the sake of the religion that they are upon, but that is a love that Allah instills in the hearts for the beloved ones. But as for the love, which is the divine love, then that is only for Allah. That we do not put the obedience to anyone other than Allah above the obedience to Allah. Because that's a deficiency in love of Allah. If someone commands you with disobedience to Allah and you obey them, then that is a deficiency of your love in Allah. And if that love enters into shirk and kufr, then of course iman is nullified. Loving the idols. Loving the worship of, of the gods that are worshipped besides Allah, then that would take you outside of Islam. So ponder over these affairs, my brothers and sisters, and think about the relationships between yourselves. Look at what we went through today. That a man does not love, a person does not love another person except for Allah's sake. He has tasted truly the sweetness of iman. So that means... That you love him for Allah's sake, so how do you treat him? You treat him with goodness and kindness, with ease and gentleness. You wish for him what you wish for yourself. This is the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa has commanded us with to have for each other. So maintain that, my brothers and sisters, because through that our community remains strong. 
our fortress remains impenetrable. So those people who wish to now come and divide our word and divide our ranks, and they wish to infiltrate and take our brothers away to misguidance and bid'ah, such as the takfiris and the khawarij and the sufis and, and quburis and other than them, all the people who come to drag you away to sin. How do you avoid that? By maintaining your connection to Allah and your connection to each other for Allah's sake. That you advise each other for Allah's sake. That you are patient with each other for Allah's sake. That you gift each other. That you pass gifts around each other for Allah's sake. Because by way of that your love will increase. You don't hate each other. You don't turn your backs upon each other. You don't betray each other. You don't outbid each other after the sale has been made. You don't harbor ill feelings towards each other. This is the man who loves another man for Allah's sake. These aren't just empty words. That person says, I love you for the sake of Allah. But you would be the first to stab him in his back. First to turn your back away from him. Not aid him. Not make dua for him. Not be patient with him. Salafiyah demands that we are united. This unity is not just empty words. But there is underlying that, that which we have discussed today. Muhabba, Muwadda, Akhuwa, Ulfa, affection, affinity, harmony. This is attained by good manners. By smiling in the face of your brother, asking him if he needs something. If you see someone who is poor, you give him. Even if you just gift each other, how much increase of love that would be. Just gifting someone. Spreading gifts, as the Prophet ﷺ said, so as to increase the love between you. Be like that, my brothers, and you'll find that our community will strengthen. More people will see and they will see the beauty of Al-Islam because of one's righteous deeds and actions and charity and good manners. You have respect for those who are older than you. A man in this community who is old enough to be your father, then treat him like a father and treat him like your uncle. Treat him like a blood. Because this is because the relationship between Ahlul Sunnah is stronger than blood relations. Because this relationship is for Allah. Respect those who are older than you. Respect the women folk who come to this masjid. Meaning that you don't look at them. You turn your glances away from them. These are daughters of someone or wives of someone. So you give honor to those who deserve honor. So that we are seen as the most upright, noble, strong community that is based upon reality. Not just based upon academic words that we pass around each other but we don't act upon. We act upon them. That's why Abdullah ibn Abbas said what he said. That these days, that people, they will have their relationships based upon what? Based upon the dunya. But the one who loves for Allah, hates for Allah, befriends for Allah, disavows himself for Allah then he is deserving of friendship from Allah. So work on those characteristics, my brothers. Work upon them. Let's not neglect them by argumentation and by petty disputes. But rather strengthen your love, strengthen your muhabba. Regardless of color, tribe, race, doesn't matter which part of the world you come from. Even if they don't speak English or Arabic, it doesn't matter. If they're Salafi, Sunni, striving, want the pleasure of Allah, then we are pleased with them likewise because we are pleased with those whom Allah is pleased with. And we know when Allah is pleased with people because those people who do righteous deeds, then it is hoped that Allah is pleased with them because Allah has mentioned that in the Quran. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.